profit machine keyword strategy. Okay, this is it. You've heard me say, hey, this lesson's important. This one's critical, yada, yada, yada. Listen, this lesson is the most valuable lesson of all when it comes to AdWords. You can get rid of all the other lessons if you want, but if you only watch and learn from this lesson, I think you'll really benefit and you'll learn to make more profit from the Google AdWords system. Now, a fair warning though, you're about to discover how my approach is very different to AdWords than probably what you've learned or seen from other experts or in AdWords books or courses. Um, but I like to say, you know, marketing is like art. There's no kind of one perfect way to do things. It is stylistic. However, math and statistics are absolutes, and we do have to respect and pay attention to those to make decisions. And the way I do things is very different from the way other experts do them. It's my personal preference, but I also, I'm kind of future-proofing my strategy and my methodology uh, for how things I believe are going to evolve with AdWords. I like to look ahead and I like to benefit from that. You know, we've been talking about relevance and engagement becoming so important with digital marketing and specifically relevance when it comes to Google AdWords. Having more relevant keywords matching with ads, with landing pages, with click-through rates, that's what's driving, you know, what they end up charging us. Uh, compared to the competitors that may be bidding similar, you know, amounts where we can pay less. And of course, the amount of exposure they'll give our ads. If we have, you know, higher quality scores, they'll, uh, they'll show our ads even more. So it just benefits us to take advantage of that. Well, the old strategy of many Google AdWords managers where they put tons of keywords into one ad group and they kind of manage it in an at-large way, uh, that's just not a good strategy anymore. That's not the best way to maximize your click rates and maximize the results you get from AdWords. So my strategy really kind of breaks things down, I believe, to a more granular, singular level like I've been talking about, which I believe is a much better way to do things and a much better way to squeeze more profit out of AdWords. Okay, so here's an approach if we're gonna add a keyword to our account. Now when I say a keyword, it's one of those two to four keyword phrases. Uh, two to four word keyword phrases, I should say. So it's a base keyword like I talked about. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna start by creating two new ad groups. So if we have a blank account, new account from scratch, okay, here's how we get started. We're gonna pick this one keyword to start with and we're gonna set up two new ad groups. The first ad group, it's gonna be set up to be exact match just in this example where the keyword we're gonna use is grow tomatoes. We could have used anything else. We're gonna stick with that. So we have an exact match of grow tomatoes inside brackets. So only ads will be shown when someone searches for just the keyword phrase, grow tomatoes exactly. Anything else, words added to it, different order, it doesn't show ads from this ad group. So that's ad group one. Ad group two, we have these settings. We have the phrase match, grow tomatoes inside quotes. And then we have the broad match modifier, which is the plus grow and plus tomatoes. As I explained, phrase match, it can be any number of other keywords, could be hundreds or even thousands, but as long as they contain grow tomatoes together as grow tomatoes, it would be in there and the ads would show. So if it's, you know, how to grow tomatoes indoors, for example, that would show. And then grow tomatoes can be those two words as long as they're included in the keyword, but in any order and with other words, or if one of those words is similar to another word uh, that Google decides. So it's a little more tightly controlled there than just broad match where it could be relevant keywords. Um, so we have that. And then last but not least, we have a negative keyword added to this second gr group and it's added at the ad group level. You can add negative keywords. I'm gonna talk about this in a moment. You can add them at the campaign level or at the ad group level. We're gonna add this at the ad group level for the second ad group. It's gonna be the negative keyword of exact match grow tomatoes. So if someone searches grow tomatoes, that second ad group, nothing happens. Only the first ad group will show the ad. If we didn't have that in there, the second ad group would be competing with the first ad group uh, for impressions and we don't want that. Now, one of the reasons why we're kind of breaking it down this way, especially that exact match in the first ad group, is because ultimately we wanna have very tight controls over the specific ad we create for that specific keyword and if we need to a specific landing page for that specific keyword because that's how we'll get the highest possible click-through rate and conversion rates for that keyword phrase there's no other way to get a higher result from it because it's an exact match with everything tailored ad landing page process to that keyword 
So the next step in the process after we were to do that and start getting some data is what I call extrapolation. So here's how we then move forward and expand based on just adding that keyword phrase, grow tomatoes to the account. So we're gonna look for the next subset of keywords based on the highest activity, additional word that's added in it to the primary keyword. And I'll explain criteria for this highest activity thing. But for example, let's say we're looking at our data and our stats, we're gonna go over how we do this. But let's say we start seeing the word cherry showing up as an important word in the keyword mix and it's matching our high activity. I'm gonna explain what that is. And so we wanna isolate this cherry that's a target word because we're now seeing all these other keywords that are creating results. Grow cherry tomatoes, grow cherry tomatoes indoors, how to grow cherry tomatoes. So it's an important keyword that adds to just grow tomatoes. So the next thing we do is step one of extrapolation is we're gonna create two new ad groups. So we've already have one and two. We're now going to create ad group three and four. Ad group three is exact match grow cherry tomatoes. That's the new keyword phrase, the primary one at least that we pulled out from the results. And we made this decision to create these new ad groups. So we set up grow cherry tomatoes. And in the fourth group, we're going to add grow cherry tomatoes within quotes. And then the broad match modifier pluses plus grow plus cherry plus tomatoes. And then we add a negative for the exact match grow cherry tomatoes. Now this probably looks familiar. It's the same schema from ad group one and two. We've just now pulled out um, that keyword to add a new ad group. And so now we can run an ad that's tailored to grow cherry tomatoes, unlike grow tomatoes. And we can have our own ad copy for that, our own landing page, so on and so forth, anywhere in the process where we want to optimize for the highest possible click-through rate and conversion rate and results, and ultimately the highest potential profit we can imagine from this keyword phrase. Now we create this fourth group to now be a prospecting lab to help us find even more keywords that we'll then be able to extrapolate, pull out, and isolate into other ad groups. Uh, as well as just managing it like it is to be able to get some clicks and get some conversions and of course get some results. So that ad group, even though it doesn't have the exact phrase match, we've moved that into its own, that fourth ad group can still be a good profit center for us and still something we manage just how it is. Step two though of the extrapolation is we have to add a negative keyword back to that second group. So because the word cherry is what we pulled out as something specific that's creating that cherry tomatoes uh, extended keyword group from grow tomatoes we'd want to add just the word cherry by itself as a negative and because it's not a two-word phrase there's no reason to do quotes or exact match or anything we now say we just we want no ads to be displayed in the second ad group um, if someone uses the word cherry anywhere amongst any of these keyword phrases that we have set up. So it's stopping the second ad group from messing with anything that contains cherry at all. Now you may be thinking though, real quick, well, what if you're doing these gardening keywords and someone was talking about growing cherries or grow cherry for something else? Well, if that was the case, if it was a little bit of broader topic, then we wouldn't do this necessarily because we would stop all the grow cherry types of keywords. But you have to remember here, we started with grow tomatoes. So this is only related to the grow tomatoes field and topic. So this is cherry as in grow cherry tomatoes. And that's why we're doing what we're doing now. We wanna add negative impact keywords. We talked about that. You're gonna find some like free and cheap and download and those other things, whatever's related to this campaign, to this uh, these ad groups. And we'll add those negative impact keywords to a negative keywords list, but only at the campaign level. So at this point we have a campaign and we have these four ad groups under the same campaign. Well, at the campaign setting level, because you can add negative keywords there or at the ad group level, we're gonna put the negative impact ones like free and whatever else is kind of unqualifying uh, our prospects for us 
at the campaign level. So as we find them in our data and we are like, oh, we don't wanna be showing ads for that at all for any of these ad groups, we add like, for example, free, then we would add that uh, into the campaign level. But just as a sidebar, the word free isn't necessarily always a, a negative impact keyword for campaigns. Sometimes they're looking for free information or free content or free trials or free quotes, things that are relevant. So don't always just add the word free. But anyways, any negative impact keywords we add for these groups and this uh, testing and, and working with here will be at the campaign level. Now, if we move an ad group to a new campaign, which I'll talk about later on in the module, we'll just simply copy over the negative impact keyword list that we've built to that other campaign, unless it doesn't apply to it, but it most likely will, because as we isolate certain ad groups into other campaigns, and there's a reason for doing that in the methodology, uh, we'll also just copy over, and I'll show you how to do that, the negative impact keyword list that we'll be building for the ones we, we, you know, the words that we don't ever want ads to show for in any of these ad groups. Now let's talk about highest activity and value. This is another area where I find most people that use AdWords screw it up, even some experts. Uh, a lot of experts, they teach, okay, you're gonna use the 80-20 rule, which of course uh, makes total sense here when we're dealing with a lot of data and a lot of activity. But most of them just say, we're gonna look at the keywords that produce the most clicks and we're gonna take the top 20% of those and then we're gonna start isolating those into some kind of smaller ad groups away from the bulk group of keywords so we can more tightly focus on the click-through rates and on the results. And that's what they focus on. They focus on the keywords that just produce the highest clicks. Well, that's not good enough for me and what I do in my strategy. So I look for three points of activity and value in the results from AdWords campaigns. I'm looking for highest click volume. So I am looking for what most other people do when they start breaking off uh, you know, keywords from a larger group to a smaller group. I am looking at click volume in order to start making decisions on which ones to isolate. So if I'm looking at subsets of keywords from Grow Tomatoes and I'm looking at all the data from the second ad group, not the first ad group, because that's only related to the exact match, but for the other matches where it's gonna start bringing in all these other keywords, if I'm looking at that data and I sort it and I see obviously uh, Grow Cherry Tomatoes is up there towards the top, I see that cherry phrase is used you know, in, in a lot of those other keywords that's getting a lot of the activity for clicks, then that's one of the reasons why I probably would have created the third and fourth group that we did. But that's just one criteria. Another thing I look for is highest conversion volume. You'll find certain keywords get a lot of conversions, like we'll get opt-ins at a much higher rate or even sales at a much greater rate uh, than other keywords that maybe don't get as many clicks. Well, if that's the case, we wanna put kind of a focus on those as well and we're gonna start extrapolating and moving those into their own ad groups and working with those separately because that's a point of high value is uh, high conversion volume. Again, a lot of managers just look at clicks and they think the conversion rates and things are gonna be different for the different campaigns and keywords, but they only wanna focus on clicks so they can then focus on you know, running different ads and click-through rates, but I think that's a mistake. So I like to isolate and extrapolate, I should say, high click volumes and then high conversion volumes. But also, I look for high, highest profit total. There may be a keyword that doesn't get many clicks at all, in fact, your top 20 keywords, let's say, get more than 100 clicks a day. This could be a little keyword that's only getting 10 a day. So for most people using the 80-20 rule, they're not gonna move this into its own campaign. It's down there in something that's not getting a lot of activity. However, what if those 10 clicks a day are converting very, very highly, and let's say they're really monetizing well, like someone's buying a product at a high rate, so our profit return for that keyword let's say it's netting us you know, $500 a month, where some of these other keywords that may be getting tons and tons of traffic are only netting us $600 a month. Well, we'd be idiots not to put an equal amount of our labor and focus into optimizing one that's very close up there uh, with what it returns in the amount of money that it makes. So in this case, that would be under consideration as well for being extrapolated 
and moved into a more singular type of a focus or split into the two campaigns, one exact match and one broad match and one phrase match and then going from there. So that's how I look at uh, the data to make decisions on what to put the focus on into optimizing the extrapolation phase. Because you're going to have all these keywords, you're going to have all this data, and you can only manipulate and work with so many of them. So you're going to have to make decisions. Well, I think this is how you make it. You look at click volume. That is important. You look at conversion volume because that is very important. And then ultimately, you look at profit. And you may find some you know, very, very low impression, very low click campaigns and ad, ad groups and keywords that generate a lot of profit. Uh, and you'll want to give them your focus because time is money and it's where we can put our time and effort into maximizing the money. And just because it's a low click volume doesn't mean we can't make some tweaks and improve the profit by 50% uh, right away where we go from that keyword now making 500 a month you know, to making 750 a month uh, or more. And so that needs to be one of the criteria in what we decide to put more focus on for optimization. So this is kind of a general overview of my methodology and how I add new keywords to an account. So if it's from scratch, this is how I start. So if we had a bunch of different keywords, like let's say we have build a garden is another main keyword that we looked at when we did our competitive research. Remember, we want to do that first. Look at our competitors. Look at those kind of spy tools. Find out where their activity is and start with those. So let's say grow tomatoes was one. So I just went through the process I just showed you. Now we have another one. Let's say build a garden. So I would do the same thing. I would set up two AdWords, two ad groups one exact match, build a garden, the other one in quotes, and also with the pluses. And then I would look at the, and I would add the negative for build a garden exact match. And then I'd start looking at the data and I would look for the next subset highest value. It's typically a lot of clicks, but it could be a lot of conversions or ultimately could be a lot of profit. So we have to consider all three, but what the next kind of maybe subset is, usually it's one more word added typically is what you'll find. So maybe it's um, the word plans. So maybe it's build a garden plans. They're, you know, they're looking for plans on how to build a garden. So then we would move, you know, build a garden plans, exact match into a new ad group. And then we would set up another one after that, that would have the build a garden plans within quotes and then the broad uh, match modifier. And then we would go back to the second ad group and add the negative keyword of plans, just like I showed you with Cherry and so on and so forth. And then we would uh, just keep moving along. So we basically start with a keyword phrase and we started out with two ad groups. By the way, this goes totally against what most people do with AdWords. You know, they take five different keywords and they put it under one ad group and they try to work with it. So, you know, you really have to treat these keywords like they're miniature ATM machines. They're almost miniature businesses. You have to treat them as separate profit centers because some of them can produce quite a bit of regular ongoing money for you every month. And it's worth your time and effort to really do it properly and to squeeze the most profit out of it. Otherwise, you start adding a lot of keywords to one ad group. All the data can get confused. You can make mistakes. You can miss things and you cannot see where the profit centers are and not see where the optimization should happen. And you end up pausing campaigns or canceling things because you think they're not profitable when if you would have done it at a more granular level up front, having these more singular or at least dual uh, ad groups for a keyword phrase, then you'd be able to, to harness the profit better. But that's the core methodology we're gonna be working with. That's the one that I suggest that you use.